All right, so I am a huge Batman fan, so much so that I spent a year after this movie came out thinking about it because I was like, well, I don't want to talk about it right away. I want to I want to wait a while before I give my thoughts and talk about the 2022 The Batman. So The first time I saw this movie, I think I fell asleep. I, I watched it at home on my 70-inch television. I have a nice sound system, and I fell asleep. Not a good start. So then I put it on again, and I watched it a second time, and I'm like, it's okay. I've got some problems with it, but it's okay. Then I watched it again and again and again. I've seen it like too many times at this point. It's been a year. I probably watched it like 20 times at least. Um, I got to a point where like whenever my wife would watch Gilmore Girls in the master bedroom, I would just walk into the living room and put on the Batman. So like, she watches Gilmore Girls a lot. So I was like, the Batman's my Gilmore Girls. Anywho, I watched it a lot. And I consider myself a huge Batman fan from as far back as I can. Basically, I've been a Batman fan since I was four. So I don't remember. I just always remember Batman being a big deal because I was born in 85. And the Tim Burton Batman movie, which was a huge deal, came out in 89. So I was four. Just trust me. I'm like, Batman's always been around. It's always been a big deal. A couple years ago, I did a review of the cartoon The Dark Knight Returns. And I, I basically had mentioned in that that. Batman was like the only thing from my childhood that has survived. He's the only thing from my childhood that has survived that I still thoroughly enjoy. I don't enjoy James Bond anymore. I don't enjoy Star Wars anymore. I, there's a ton of things I don't enjoy anymore, but I still enjoy Batman. That being said, this movie underperformed. Uh, it made a profit, but it underperformed. And why is that? I would argue that the movie underperformed simply because BVS and the Justice League 2 versions of it were terrible. So I think this movie underperformed because a lot of non... Those movies were bad, all right? Bat Batman vs. Superman was bad, and Justice League was bad, and the Zack Snyder Justice League was bad. They're all bad. And so it kind of tarnished Batman's name. Now, Batman will be fine, all right? As a Batman fan... Batman is a roller coaster of highs and lows. You know, 89 Batman was a high. Batman Returns was a low, although I enjoy that movie now. At the time, it was a low. Batman Forever was a high, even though now that movie's considered bad. Batman and Robin was a low. Then we had Batman Begins, which was a high. Then we had The Dark Knight, which was a high. Then we had The Dark Knight Rises, which is like, eh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to talk about the live actions, all right? The cartoons are their own thing, which I could get into. As far as the cartoons, <laughs> I wasn't going to talk about this, but, like, why not? This is, the, this is my Batman discussion. I, I've been thinking about this for a year. As far as the cartoons, Batman Mask of the Phantasm is fantastic. The sequel is okay. Pretty good. The Dark Knight Returns cartoon is fantastic. The Long Halloween Part 1 is fantastic. Super good. Part 2, not so much. After a year, I have come to the conclusion that actually the 2022 Batman is the best Batman live action movie. It really is. And there's numerous reasons for that. But like the 2022, the Batman is the best Batman. The AI subtitles are going to freak out because they're like, he's saying Batman a lot. Unlike other versions of Batman, this one is like really good in general for the comic books and just really good in general. Like there's been so many iterations of Batman with so many different ideas and sets of rules that I feel like the 2022 one is pretty solid. Like it's got the best rules personally and it has the best Batman in it and it's the best Batman movie. You know, it has more Batman in it than the other movies. All right. So, like, Batman is almost Batman in every scene, pretty much. Like, I like every time I watch it, I'm like, man, Batman's in this a lot. Which sounds weird, but, like, in the other Batman movies, Batman isn't in it that much. Particularly Batman Returns, The Dark Knight Rises. Batman's just not in it that much. But in this movie, Batman's in, like, what feels like almost every scene. And he's not, but, like, pretty much. So, like, there's more 
Batman in this Batman movie than the other ones. So I feel like for that, like if you're a Batman fan, you're like, this one's got a lot of Batman in it. So that's good. Um, thing number two. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm clearing my throat. Thing number two, besides the fact that this Batman movie has a ton of Batman in it, this this Batman also, like, his voice is so much better than the other Batman, okay? So, like, the problem with the Dark Knight trilogy, which is considered, like, oh, the best, is, like, Batman is the worst character, and his voice is really obnoxious, so much so that, like, the Dark Knight trilogy... Christian Bale's Batman voice became a meme that we can all do, you know, where you're like, where are the drugs? I have one rule, you know, like everyone can do that voice and it became a meme, not a good Batman voice, super distracting. And then we talk about the Michael Keaton Batman, you know, he's just killing people, which is the same problem with the Ben Affleck Batman is he's just killing people and you can't have Batman kill people because the very first question that arises is like, why doesn't he kill the Joker? So, like, you can't have Batman killing people. Can some iterations of Batman have that? Sure. But then the question becomes, like, why is he not just murdering his supervillains one at a time? Okay? So, in general, Batman probably shouldn't kill people. And in... I mean, he can if it's collateral damage. Oops-a-daisy. But he can't, like, actively be killing people like the Punisher. Which this, like, 2022 Batman follows. Plus the voice is much better. Plus the costume is much better. Like, I never liked the Ben Affleck bat suit. I can't believe Batman fans, some of them like that bat suit. I just, I don't like it. I don't like it. I, I think it looks stupid. I think the cow looks stupid. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the cowl. Here's the problem, okay? With the 2022 Batman, the cowl has, like, some pros and cons, okay? I, I like the mouth of this cowl much better than the Dark Knight trilogy mouth. I do. Um, I think the mouth is much better. I think the ears are interesting because they're kind of more devil it, horn ears. And I think that's interesting. I think it looks good. Silhouette form. I think the nose is a little odd, kind of. They made it, like, they, they went for, like, a skull look. Anyway, like, I don't know. As far as the cowl, it's not the best. It's not the worst. It's kind of in the middle for me. But I feel like the suit is super good. Like, I really like the suit. I think it's the best Batman suit of all the movies, for sure. If I could have a Batman suit, I want this one. I would take this one way over the Dark Knight suit or the Dark Knight Rises suit. The Dark Knight Rises and the Dark Knight cowl has like a really small mouth that kind of I don't like. And the neck seems kind of flimsy. I don't know. I just think this like Dracula collar in the new one looks pretty good. Okay, so the voice is good. The suit's good. There's more Batman in this movie. He's not killing people. It's a really good Batman movie. Like, I feel like it's the best Batman movie, personally, um, if you're a Batman fan. Um, the car chase in this one is better than all the other Batman movies, for sure. The fights, I think, are better than all the other Batman movies. I think the cinematography is better than the other Batman movies. I think, I think Robert Patterson is probably the best live-action Batman we've got. Personally, I just do. I think, I think he's better than Michael Keaton. I think he's definitely better than George Clooney. <laughs> who has the worst Batman voice? It's either Christian Bale or George Clooney, and that's really weird to think about, but I feel like that's accurate. So that's that's my issue with The Dark Knight, is that you got, like, Heath Ledger doing this amazing performance, and then you got Christian Bale doing, like, gravel marble cancer voice. And, like, I don't know. It's just awkward. It's just awkward. But uh, now that it's been a year, I can safely say that, like, yeah, The Batman is the best Batman movie. Live action, for sure. It really is. It's super good. As far as like Batman is concerned in this movie, I really like, I just like it. I just feel like it's perfect for the comic book and the character. Like when I, this movie isn't just the movie. It's like all of it encompassed. And like, I think of like, as a Batman fan and someone who's like read the comic books and been a fan my whole life, I just feel like, man, this one really nails it in a way that the other ones don't. The Tim Burton ones don't nail Batman because he's, like, murdering people and, like, there's no character development and, like, Bruce Wayne is kind of almost having a... I don't know. Like, he's almost having a good time. You know, the, the Batman Forever Val Kilmer Batman is just kind of... He's okay, actually, but, like, that movie's bad. Um, Batman and Robin has got George Clooney. He's terrible. Debatably the worst Batman voice because he's just using his normal voice. Then you got the Dark Knight trilogy, which is considered the gold standard, but to me it's not. 
like my issues with the Dark Knight trilogy are like numerous. Um, in general, in the Dark Knight trilogy, besides Batman having a terrible voice and not the best bat suit in all of those movies, that Batman has like an end. You know, like that Batman is like, oh, I'm just going to be Batman, fix the city and retire. And I just feel like that. Yeah, that's not Batman. It followed the no kill rule, which is fantastic. But as far as Batman wanting to retire, no. You know, like to me, Batman, Batman is kind of like Moses in the Bible. <laughs> like, like Moses is a shepherd, right? And he like leads his people, but like he can't see the promised land, you know? So from my perspective, like Batman is a tragic hero because he cannot stop. He cannot have a family. He cannot have love. He can never see the promised land. In the way that the Batman 2022 ends where he's riding off not following Catwoman is like perfect. You know, like it's perfect. That is Batman. Like Batman is someone who doesn't see the promised land, just like, you know, the biblical character of Moses. And and I just feel like this Batman really nailed it because like this Batman doesn't kill. This Batman is not having fun. This Batman can't see the promised land. It's, it's Batman. It's perfect. It has its moments of working with the police. It has its moments of running away from the police. It, it, it's, it's such a good movie for the character, you know, and that's why I feel like not only is it an entertaining movie, because fundamentally the movie is Taxi Driver and Seven mixed with Batman. So like not only is it the, okay, The Dark Knight is Heat that happens to have Batman in it. It's Michael Mann's Heat but it has Batman in it. That's that's why that movie was cool. And like this this new movie is basically Taxi Driver mixed with Seven starring the Batman. It's freaking great. Like when I say that out loud, I'm like, you know, if you've seen Seven or Taxi Driver, you should understand why that's a good combo. <laughs> to like, it's like if Travis Bickle <laughs> was trying to solve a crime as Batman. It's so good. Because like the Batman in this is not well adjusted. He's not He's not doing so good as far as like his personal life, and I just feel like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, because it's Batman. Anyway, if you haven't seen this movie, go see it, and if you're a Batman fan, like, I definitely, I respect your opinion thinking The Dark Knight is better, because it has Heath Ledger, and I get it, I get it, Heath Ledger is like an Academy Award winning performance, it's perfect, so the best Joker ever, Heath Ledger's Joker to me is a definitive Joker, the problem is the Batman is talking to him. And every time the Batman talks in those movies, I just wince because I'm like, oh my God, how did they go with that voice? How do they not fix it in post? You know, how do they go with that voice? The worst Batman voice ever. So we go back to this 2022 version where you're like, really good Batman voice, really good suit. He's Batman in the whole movie, a ton of Batman scenes. The fights are good. The car chases are good. The mystery is good. Every time I watch it, I pick up on new details that I didn't catch. Every time I watch it, I pick up on new details. Like, it's a really deep, layered film. It's really well put together. Um, if I could change one thing about Batman 2022, and it's a nitpick, I'd have the end credit music be different, personally. I feel like in the 2022 version, he's vengeance the whole time, and at the very end, he becomes, like, the actual heroic Batman. So I feel like it would have been cool to have a different, like, theme at the end. You know, like something that was like more heroic and triumphant. Um, I used the the end credit song from the Dark Knight Returns cartoon because I was like, oh, it's real good. I'm a Batman fan. Deep cuts. Deep cuts. Watch the Adam West show. Watch the cartoon. Was four when 89 came out. Lifelong Batman fan. All right. But I'm not just someone who likes everything Batman. All right. I don't like BVS. I don't. I don't like the Justice League. I don't. It's not like, you know, and like, oh, those movies hurt this movie for sure. I had a coworker who I was talking to him about this film and he's like, oh, I didn't watch it. I'm like, why? And he's like, oh, I was just so sick of it after BVS and Justice League. And so I'm like, yeah, those, the, those two movies absolutely hurt this movie at the box office and absolutely hurt this movie. But I'm pretty sure the sequel will do much better. Similar to Batman Begins and Dark Knight. I'm, I'm pretty sure the sequel will do much better. Um, but yeah, I would just say that like, you know, Batman's back in like full, full form. And what a good job the director did and the writers did and Robert Patterson did, you know, like what a fantastic job. They really nailed it. Huge fan. 
I literally waited a year to talk about this because I just was like, I don't want to talk about this until it settles. You know, like I don't want to just be early and I want to wait a while and watch it a bunch to kind of come up with what, what do I f- think about this movie? How do I feel about it? And I'm like, I feel like it's the best live action Batman movie ever. Like for sure. Like for sure. So take that what you will. And yeah, that's it. I'll see, I'll see you next time.